there's two different ways to set the valves depending on what kind of motor you have. This is a flat tappet motor. So for flat tappet, solid lift motors, whatever, you have to have feeler gauges and you actually measure the uh, valve lash with these feeler gauges. And that's what we're going to do today. If you have a hydraulic motor, what you have to do is take your rocker arm and you want to tighten down on the push rod. Once you've gotten it tight where you can no longer wiggle the push rod, you start backing off your nut so the rocker arm comes off just into where the rocker arm, you can shake it just barely. Once you got that, tighten your nut down a quarter turn and you're done. For the flat tappet, we're going to use these feelers. I was always told you're supposed to set the valve lash with the motor hot, but I've come to several problems. One is, if you set it hot, it's hot. You tend to burn yourself, the oil's hot, the rocker arms are hot, things like that. So I don't like that. Plus, as the motor cools down, everything starts to change. So you get a motor up to temperature, by the time you pull the valve covers off, the stud girls off, everything is starting to cool down. So you check one or check the lash on one cylinder, go to the next one, the next one's now cooler. By the time you get to the eight cylinder, you've cooled down a lot from that first cylinder. So I like to set it cold. It makes it easier and it makes it safer on me. What you need to do with a flat tap at cam is your cam should come with a cam card. It looks like this. And it actually should tell you where to set it. Now this is a PRC 109. It's the cam that's in the car from JR Motorsports. And it tells me I should set the intake at 18 thousandths and the exhaust at 20 thousandths. The exhaust is usually a little bigger because it gets hotter. Now this is a hot setting. So how do we make up for the motor not being hot? Well when the motor heats up the lash actually goes down. It goes down about three thousandths from my experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it cold, but I'm going to set it at twenty-one thousandths and twenty-three thousandths. That's three thousandths over, so that when it heats up, I get my eighteen thousandths and my twenty thousand settings. Now, how do you know which valves to set when? I've got this neat little cam card that tells you when and where to set them. See, we have a top dead center setting and a 360. That means right now we're sitting on top dead center. We're going to set these valves. In a minute, I'm going to, or when I get through with these, I'm going to take my bump start button and I'm going to turn the motor all the way back over and then we're going to check these. And I'll actually put that up on the screen right now in case you want to copy that down. Now I made a mistake a while ago, so I have to correct myself. It's not three thousands, it's ten thousands. It's a good thing I actually write this stuff down, huh? So my eighteen thousands measurement is now going to become twenty-eight thousands. That's for my intake. And my twenty thousands is now going to become thirty thousands on the exhaust side. And my feeler gauges didn't go that big, so what I'm going to do is double up. I've got an eighteen thousands and a ten thousands, put them together and I get twenty-eight thousands. So my little cam card I had says I need to set the number one, that's this cylinder, intake when the motor's at top dead center. Now the intake is the one that doesn't have an exhaust port coming out of it. So see we've got a rocker arm here and an exhaust, so this is my exhaust valve. So this one needs to be set to 28 thousandths. So I just take my feeler gauge and run it underneath here. Now a lot of people say you're supposed to come in from the side so you don't get the roller action helping you. Um, you can do that. It does make it more difficult to kind of poke it in there. I've never really had a problem going in from the roller side. Basically what you want is you want it to feel like you're pushing these feeler gauges through Play-Doh. If it's real hard like you're pushing against a block of wood, then your valve lash is too tight. If it just falls right in there, then your valve lash is too loose. So basically like you're pushing through Play-Doh or modeling clay. So this one feels really good. The next one on my cam card says the exhaust. So I'm going to come back and get a different feeler gauge. And this is my exhaust on number one. And I've got my exhaust feelers here. And I'm going to put it in there. All right, this one is feeling a little tight. It's not bad, but it's a little stiffer than I like. So, take my 9 16th inch wrench and I'm going to loosen off on it. You see that little bit of a turn has now made it way too loose. There's no resistance here. 
So, take my Allen wrench, I'm going to tighten just ever so slightly, and then tighten back down, and check it again. Alright, that's a lot better now. It's still a little bit stiff, but it's not bad. I think we're going to call that good and go with it. Now, you notice I didn't tighten down my nut in here. What I did is I tightened down this little set nut inside, got it where I thought it needed to be, and then I tightened it down. If I want this a little looser, I back off, I tighten this one a little bit more, and then I tighten back down with a 9 16 The reason is I just can't turn this one tight enough to get that locked in there like I like it. I right, backed off a little bit. Still maybe just a hair, hair tight. So let's back off a little bit more. Right, probably. And I got it too loose. And it's just a trial and error. And that's the only way I can do it is trial and error. Maybe still just a little bit tight. There we go. Just like pushing through Play-Doh. Alright, I've got these two set. I'm just going to follow my cam card, go all the way around and tighten all of them it tells me to do at top dead center.